Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast of the Narrative Lectionary. My name is Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast for Sunday, April 7th, 2024. This is the second Sunday of Easter, and we're moving uh, in this in this Sunday, this week, uh, from the Gospel of Mark, uh, which we concluded with, uh, with the story of the resurrection last week, uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, we're moving from the Gospel of Mark into the book of Acts. So uh, this, is the, uh, this is the pattern in the narrative lectionary for the season of Easter. Well, and for the Revised Common Lectionary, for that matter, uh, we, uh, we're in the book of Acts. So given the resurrection, given, um, you know, Jesus' uh, death, crucifixion, and resurrection, how then does do those early disciples, uh, does the early church uh, move into the future? Uh, you might say that's the, the story of the book of Acts. So the text for this Sunday is the very beginning of Acts. So Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 14. Um, and here's where uh, we see, uh, of course, Acts is kind of Luke part two, right? So we see the same author, the same themes, uh, the same audience uh, for uh, the Acts of the Apostles, to use its formal name, uh, the same, uh, that that's all the same as the Gospel of, uh, according to Luke. So in the first book, Theophilus, uh, writes Luke, and we're just going to call him Luke, uh, going with tradition. I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. Uh, and now uh, he's going to talk about what uh, what happens after afterwards. This uh, reading through verse 14 speaks of uh, really the, the, the theme, it contains the theme verse, you might say, of the book of Acts. And that's found in uh, verses uh, eight and nine, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea uh, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Uh, and then Jesus ascends into heaven. So uh, you will be my witnesses after the Holy Spirit has come upon you uh, in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So this Jesus movement, uh, this um, the, the way, uh, what comes to be known as the church, begins in Jerusalem, right? That's, uh, it begins as, as a, a Jewish faith or a part of the Jewish faith, begins in Jerusalem, branches out to Samaria and Judea, and then to the ends of the earth. And that's what we see, uh, that's what we will see in the book of Acts in the coming weeks. I really appreciate reading uh, Acts after the Mark inversion of the resurrection account. Um, uh, because uh, the, the Lucan narrative addresses the gap uh, of, how, uh, of how this story uh, uh, it, it, how this story gets spread if you use the sh short version last week where the women were afraid and remained and did not tell anyone. Um, because here um, uh, the writer says, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them uh, during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And, um, and, and so th there, there is that uh, continuation of the story. And in many ways, having these uh, two parts, uh, the gospel uh, according to Luke and then Acts of the Apostles, also believed to be written by the same author, um, we have the context for the story. And um, you mentioned about how it starts in Jerusalem, and then uh, the instruction is uh, that Jesus says, you know, go into all the world. Well, that's a continuation of the story of the promise given to Abraham and, and Sarah, um, mm -hmm. that um, I will make of you a great nation. We know that nation to become, to be the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob becoming Israel. So his descendants are the Israelites and um, uh, the Jews. And um, But that, that forming of that nation was for the sake to bless all the other nations. And so here, Jesus saying, you shall be my witnesses starting at home uh, in Judea, but also Samaria to those uh descendants of Jacob who you don't talk to anymore. Um, and then 
uh, to the ends of the earth, to every nation, every tongue, and every tribe. And uh, they will be witnesses um, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So this isn't just a testimony of what we've seen, but it is um, the presence of God acting among us, in us, with us, and through us. This is the work of God, the Holy Spirit, and it is the proclamation uh, of the kingdom of God. And um, what does this restoration of the kingdom of Israel look like? Uh, uh, that, that, that's the question that, that they, the disciples ha- had asked before before uh, Jesus uh, ascends, uh, or the angels ask. I'm not going to get my people right, am I? Uh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, as, they, as they're looking up and uh, they're, they're trying to figure out, you know, what does the, will you restore the kingdom of Israel? But if you think about all of the records of the words of Jesus, he never talked about restoring the kingdom of Israel. The language was always the kingdom of God, the reign of God. Yeah. The kingdom yeah. of heaven. That's mm-hmm. that promise that Israel was to be a blessing to the ends of the earth for every nation. And so they were looking at the wrong things, but when the Spirit descended, they would be able to be witnesses, not just to Jesus, but to the God made known in Jesus and his eternal promises that were given first to Israel for the sake of all the world. Yeah, yeah, amen. So I I happened to uh, go to, well, he, here on campus, we had a faculty scholarship session just a few days ago, and uh, Matt Skinner, who some of you may know uh, from the uh, the other podcast on this website. Uh, um, uh, Summer Brainwave, I can say that. Sorry, but, <laughs> yes, which Joy is also a part of. Uh, Matt is is kind of an expert on the book of Acts, and so uh, he's writing a commentary on the book of Acts uh, for the interpretation commentary series. And so he was talking about uh, kind of themes in Acts, and he said that uh, he really likes the ascension, which mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk say that. You know, like really? uh, some churches celebrate uh, as- ascension. Um, on a, which is always on a Thursday for some reason. Um, some many don't, uh, or they, you know, maybe mention it in the following Sunday. But uh, Matt made this point that in the ascension we see Jesus ascending bodily into heaven, uh, and that and that that's important, right? That bodies mm-hmm. are still important even yes. post resurrection, right? Um, I've often thought about the story of doubting Thomas and the wounds in Jesus' resurrected body. I hadn't thought about it in the same terms with the ascension, but it's true, right? That bodies are still important and that the spirit that is given is the spirit. Jesus sends that spirit, right? The Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is the power of Christ Mm -hmm. uh, at work in those early disciples and in the early church. So that was, that was helpful. And then uh, that spirit constantly uh, surprises, mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. Um, surprises the believers as well as those around them, right? That uh, uh, surely uh, the gospel isn't for Saul, right? The persecutor right. of the church. Surely the gospel isn't for him. Well, as a matter of fact, in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, Saul becomes Paul uh, or changes his name to Paul and becomes the foremost uh, apostle of the church. Well, surely the gospel isn't for uh, Cornelius, Cornelius. Right? Uh, in Acts 10, I believe, right? Surely that's not, uh, you know, that person is outside of the community, is outside of the the uh, the reach of, uh, of God, of the Holy Spirit. Well, no, actually, you know, surely exactly. the Gentiles aren't part of this. Surely the Greeks aren't part of this, right? Surely. And the Spirit just keeps on pushing those boundaries out and out to, again, as you've said, Joy, to every nation and every tongue uh, to the ends of the earth. So I, I like that connection with the call of Abraham. Uh, I think you're right, right? Abraham is called to be a blessing. His family will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. We see that, um, at least 
in part uh, lived out uh, in in the book of Acts. Well, we also need to say, of course, that uh, there are Jews who don't accept Jesus as the, as the Messiah, and they continue to live faithful lives uh, in uh, in in response to uh, the the call of uh, Abraham, in response to uh, God's faithfulness to them through the centuries. So we always have to, you know, be careful to say the church doesn't replace uh, the chosen people, but uh, <laughs> we are humbled, we are grateful. Uh, as as Paul says in Romans nine through eleven, that we are included then in that uh, in that promise in that covenant. Yes, and that and and for us to recognize that around the world we we must um, discard uh, the narrow nationalistic viewpoints and recognize the surprising work. I love that the surprising work of the Holy Spirit um, that. It, evidently is moving to form communities that practice righteousness, that brings a obtention a, a uh, to the presence and promise and glory of God. And those promises are not the nationalistic political promises right. of social right. secular governments. And right. so it, we, we can be guilty of doing what ancient Israel did because the people of God today are the people of God in the past. We need the work of the Holy Spirit to transform yeah. us into what God created us to be, witnesses to him. Yeah, yeah. and it, and I think you're exactly right. I mean, I, again, in this election season, we need to remember um, God is not on our side. We cannot claim God for our side. The question is, that. are we, the question is, are we on yeah. God's side? Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, it just makes me want to tear my hair out when I see <laughs> signs that say God and guns. Right? Like, that don't is go, not don't take that. Don't take me there because that is, for me, yeah. um, that's going to get me into the Ten Commandments and I'm going to get us in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is not the gospel, right? We cannot equate God with our own political agenda on the left or the right. On the uh, left or the right. We see it more on the right. Uh, so just, I, yeah. I, I, I think we need to be careful about that. I think we see that on the left as well. Fundamentalism True. is not the prerogative of uh, one particular political spectrum. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, you, thank you for that correction. Yeah. But uh, this is what I tell my students, especially when I'm teaching prophets, right? If your theology looks like one political party or the other, if you know, if you don't, um, if you can't tell the difference between your theology and one party's political platform, uh, then uh, something's wrong with your theology. You, <laughs> you need, need to, to re-examine. Re you your need theology. to go back. You need to go back to scripture and and study some more because uh, we should be on both sides a countercultural voice. Anyway. I didn't mean no. to take us into that territory. Yeah, no, that's exactly what makes this. Um, this um, word uh, to the disciples, so incredible. Um, I mean, when you think of the disagreement between the Jews and the Samaritans, and yeah, then you think yeah, yeah. of the reality of, you know, what it means to say, you're going to start at home. You're going to cross over that immediate enemy border that, mm -hmm. you know, we've learned about in the life of Jesus, you know, using the Samaritan as the example of a good neighbor, you uh, addressing a Samaritan woman who says, dude, why are you asking me for a drink? You don't touch my utensils. What are you doing in my neighborhood? You know, yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and, and they're told, you're going to be my witnesses starting at home, but this isn't just for Israel. This never was just for one people group. And if we present our theology, our good news, our gospel, as if it's just for our political tribe, as just for our racial tribe, just for our gender, just for those who ex experience life in our caste or class, then we need to re-examine that because we are to be witnesses to the God made known in Jesus for all the world to experience the prosperity and shalom that Jesus uh, has demonstrated in his very body. Yes, yes, indeed. So starting in Jerusalem, 
in all Judea and, as you say, the enemy territory of Samaria and to the ends of the earth. May it be so for all of us. Amen.